Hi guys! Welcome back to our YouTube channel. So our topic for today will be all about share-based payment. But in this video, we will focus on cash settled share-based payment because on my prior upload, diniscuss na natin doon yung equity settled share-based payment. Okay? So kapag sinabi natin share-based payment, once again, these are additional con uh, compensation given to the employees in exchange for their services. Natawag silang share-based payment because the additional compensation is normally based on the fair value of the shares. Kaya, itong mga share-based payment na to, tinatawag din silang performance-based compensation because nakasalalay sa performance ng mga empleyado natin kung magkano ba ang kanilang marireceive. Kasi kung maganda ang performance nila, mataas ang net income. At kapag mataas ang net income, mataas ang fair value of shares. Tama ba? At kapag mataas ang fair value of shares, obviously, mas malaki yung share-based payment na marireceive nila. Are we good? So, na-discuss natin or, uh, on our prior video na meron tayong dalawang klase ng share-based payment. We have equity settled and we have cash settled. So, in this video, we'll focus na sa cash settled no? share-based payment. So, ilalagay ko dito cash settled. Share based payment. So kapag sinabi po natin cash settled share based payment, this is actually a share based payment transaction, no? Whereby an entity incurs a liability for services received, and the liability is based on the entity's equity instrument. Worded in another way, dito hindi po equity instrument ang ating binibigay. Ang binibigay natin dito will be cash, kaya siya na tawag na cash settled, no? So dito. Bakit sinasabi ng definition na nag incur tayo ng liability? Ganito kasi yan. Sabi ko on our prior video, possible na may vesting period. Tama ba? And at the end of the vesting period, dun lang sila magiging entitled doon sa share-based payment na yon. So hanggat hindi pa natin nababayaran yung ating mga empleyado, hindi sila magiging entitled doon sa cash na yon. That is why liability pa ah, muna ang ating i-recognize since hindi pa tayo nagbabayad. Maluwanag ba yon? So ngayon ganito, anong pinagkaiba ng equity settled at ang cash settled aside sa equity instrument ang binibigay sa equity settled at cash ang binibigay sa cash settled? Ganito yon Sa equity settled service compensation, if we are using the fair value method, see to it na hindi po tayo nagre-remeasure ng share base payment after the vesting period. Unless, syempre, intrinsic value method ang gamit mo. But here, in cash settled uh, share base payment, see to it, that until a liability or the liability is settled, the entity will remeasure or shall remeasure the fair value of the liability no? at each reporting date and at the date of settlement with the changes in fair value recognized in profit or loss for the period. Are we good? So dito, since cash ang ating binibigay, see to it na nag issue po tayo dito nung tinatawag natin na share. Again, meron tayong tinatawag na share. Appreciation right. Appreciation Rights Or yung tinatawag po natin na SARS Okay? So, sir, ano yung mga share appreciation rights na yan? Well, kapag sinabi natin share appreciation rights These entitles, no? The employees to receive cash Which is equal to the excess of market value Of the entity share Over a predetermined price for a stated number of shares Ibig sabihin na itong share appreciation right na to it creates a liability now because it entitles the employees to receive cash. Wala nag ba? So, kapag nagbigay tayo ng share appreciation, right? See to it na phantom shares lang po ang ini-issue natin dito. Sir, ano ang ibig sabihin ng phantom shares? Kapag sinabi natin phantom, alam naman natin na ghost ang other term dyan. Multo yan, tama ba? Ibig sabihin, ginagamit lang natin itong mga phantom shares na to to measure how much will be the liability but at the end of the day, here in cash settled share based payment, wala talaga tayong shares na ini-issue. Okay ba tayo doon? Okay? So next question ngayon is kung paano ba i-measure, no? So measurement of the liability. So how do we measure the amount of liability na kailangan natin i-recognize? Okay? So, see to it that measurement of liability is equal no to the to its fair value. So, sir, paano po makocompute yung fair value of liability? Well, fair value of liability is actually equal to the market value of shares. Once again, this is equal to the market value of shares minus yung tinatawag natin na pre-determined price. So, minsan sasabihin ng problem no na dapat mas mataas sa predetermined price na to yung maging market value of shares bago maging entitled yung mga empleyado natin. 
So kung ang predetermined price is 100 and then ang market value of shares is 120, ang mga empleyado natin entitled sila to 20 pesos per share. Okay? Tsaka mo yan imumultiply saan? Imumultiply natin yan sa phantom shares. Okay ba tayo dun? So that's the first computation. Sir, possible ba na walang predetermined price? Yes, that's possible. So if walang predetermined price, ang mangyayari ngayon is that the fair value of shares will just be multiplied sa phantom shares. Okay? So kapag walang predetermined price, yung market value, diretso multiply sa phantom shares. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo dun? Okay, good? So wala naman ganong pinagkaiba ang equity settled sa cash settled at papatunayan natin yan sa problem number 1 at sa problem number 2. So start tayo dito sa problem number 1. So here in problem number 1, an entity granted a share appreciation right to the general manager on January 1, 2017. After a 4-year service period, so 4 years po ang vesting period natin, the employee is entitled to receive cash equal to the appreciation of share price over the market value on January 1, 2017. Ibig sabihin yung market value ngayon on January 1, 2017, which is the 200 pesos amount here is actually our pre-determined price. So, ang marireceive ng mga empleyado natin is yung market value in excess of that predetermined price. Okay? So, ilan yung phantom shares natin? Based on 20,000 shares daw. So, exercise date is on January 1, 2021. And once again, magre-remeasure tayo ng liability until the settlement date. So, kahit na exercise date is January 1, kailangan mo pa rin alamin kailan yung exercise date. Okay? So, the quoted prices of the entity shares are as follows. So, compute for the compensation expense at the end of 2017 to 2020 and provide journal entries. Okay? So, dito, 2017 muna tayo. Alright? So, here in 2017, magkano yung total compensation expense natin? Total compensation expense will be equal to 210. That's the market value at the end of 2017 minus the predetermined price of 200 then times the phantom shares which is equal to 20,000 shares. Okay? So, ang makocompute natin dito is actually equal to 200,000. 4 years ang vesting period. So, divide natin to by 4 years para makompute no, yung compensation expense for the year 2017. So, the compensation expense now for the year 2017 is how much? That's equal to 50,000 pesos. So, the journal entry here is to debit compensation expense or salaries expense or pwede rin namang remuneration expense, pare-pareho lang yun, equal to 50,000 pesos. Then, the corresponding credit this time will not be share options outstanding. Once again, cash ang ating binibigay dito. Cash settled share-based payment creates a liability. That's why the corresponding credit here is uh, the account what we call salaries payable. So, credit salaries payable equal to 50,000 pesos. Okay? Now, let's move on to the year 2018. No? So, for the year 2018, how much will now be our total compensation expense? That's equal to 220 pesos. That's the fair value at the end of 2018 minus the predetermined price of 200 then times the phantom shares of 20,000. So, dito magkano na nakocompute natin? Easy nito, ang nakocompute muna dito is 400,000. Tama ba? So, para makompute yung cumulative compensation expense, alam natin, based on discussion sa equity settled, mumultiply natin yung total compensation expense sa kung ilang taon na yung lumipas. So, times 2, then divide mo sa vesting period over 4. So, times 2 over 4. So, cumulative compensation expense now will be equal to 200,000 pesos. Okay? Then, para makompute yung compensation expense just for the year 2018, all you have to do is to deduct from the cumulative compensation expense of 200, the compensation expense recognized last year, which is 50,000. So, compensation expense for the year 2018 now will be equal to 150,000 pesos. Very good. So, the journal entry here is to debit compensation expense and then to credit salaries payable equal to 150,000 pesos. Okay? Next, punta tayo sa 2019. For the year 2019, magkano total compensation expense? Well, total compensation expense will be equal no, to uh, 240 pesos minus 200 then times the phantom shares of 20,000 shares. Okay? So, 40 
times 20,000, this will give us total compensation expense equal to 800,000. Okay? So, if the total compensation expense no, is 800,000, para ma-compute, again, to compute the cumulative compensation expense, once again, all you have to do is i-multiply yan sa kung ilang taon na lumipas, which is 3 years, then divide it by the vesting period, which is 4. So, magkano yan, guys? 800,000 times 3 over 4, cumulative compensation expense will be equal to 600,000. Okay? Then, para ma-compute yung compensation expense for the year 2019, I-deduct mo dyan yung compensation expense recognized last 2017 and 2018 which is equal to 50,000 and 150,000 respectively. Or pwede rin naman na yung cumulative compensation expense last year which is the year 2018 ang i-deduct mo dyan which is 200,000. Pareho lang naman yun. Okay? So the compensation expense now for the year 2019 will be equal to 200,000 pesos. So, journal entry is to debit compensation expense and then to credit salaries payable equal to 200,000. Okay? So, let me just add another page, no? Para mabigay ko yung journal entry for the year 2020. Apat na taon to, eh. Okay? So, total compensation expense muna ulit tayo. For the year 2020, dalawang scenario, no? Scenario 1 at scenario 2. So, dito muna tayo sa scenario 1. Okay? So, what if 250 daw? So, 250 minus the predetermined price of 200 times the phantom shares of 20,000, magkano total compensation expense natin? This is equal to 1 million pesos. Once again, kapag dulo na ng vesting period, no need to multiply this by 4 over 4 kasi same lang ang makukuha mo. Because at the end of the vesting period, total compensation expense will be equal to the cumulative compensation expense. Okay? So, if the total compensation expense is 1 million pesos, didak lang natin dyan yung compensation expense recognized for the past 3 years, right? which is for the years 2017 to 2019, na nagkakahalaga ng 50, 150, and 200,000 respectively, para makompute yung alin, para makompute yung compensation expense for the year 2020. Or pwede rin nga na yung cumulative compensation expense ng 2019 which is equal to 600,000 ang i-deduct mo dyan. Pareho lang ang makukompute mo which is equal to 400,000. Okay? So for the year 2020, the journal entry is to debit compensation expense and then to credit what? To credit uh, salaries payable which is equal to 400,000 pesos. Okay? Then if exercise na yan, the last journal entry here is to debit what? Is to debit salaries payable kasi babayaran na natin sila. Mawawala na yung utang. So, debit salaries payable equal to 1 million pesos. Then, to credit cash equal to 1 million pesos. Okay? So, that's illustrative problem number 1, case number 1. So, may case number 2 pa tayo. Ha? So, here in case number 2, ano meron? Well, the total compensation expense here will be equal to magkano? Well, 200 na lang daw, no? So, 200 minus 200 times 20,000 shares or this is equal to zero. Tama ba? So, wala tayong utang because ang usapan, dapat mas mataas sa 200 ang market price. Eh, same lang, 200 pa to. Ibig sabihin, wala tayong magiging liability dapat. That's why here, on the second scenario, the journal entry is just to de-recognize the salaries payable. So, debit salaries payable equal to 600,000. That's equal to the salaries payable or the compensation expense recognized in the prior years. No? Then, to credit what? To credit salaries expense or compensation expense equal to 600,000. So, you need to did, uh, reduce the amount of salaries expense at the end of 2020. Kasi, right, sobra yun na-recognize mo for the prior years. Maliwanag ba yan? Okay? So, that's illustrative problem number one. Okay? Ngayon, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number two. So, here in illustrative problem number two, Pepper Corporation grants 100 share appreciation rights to each of its 100 employees. Again, isang daan na share appreciation rights for every employees on condition that the employees remain and it's employee for the next three years. So, during year one, eight employees have left. The entity estimates that a further 14 employees uh, will leave during years two 
entry. So, doon muna tayo, no? So, year 1 muna tayo. Kailan yung year 1? Walang nakalagay, no? So, lagay na lang natin year 1. Okay? So, dito, ilan na nga ulit total employees natin? We have a total of 100 employees. Walo ang umalis and inaasaan na 14 pa ang aalis. So, 100. Sa so, year 1, aalis po yung walo. And then, year 2, ilang taon nga ulit to? Uh, 3 years. Year 2 to 3, inaasahan natin na 14 pa nga alis. So, ang matitira lang talaga is ilan? 100 minus 8 minus 14 or this is equal to 78 employees. Bawat isa, makakareceive ng ilan? Bawat isa, makakareceive ng isang daan. So, times 100. So, we have a total of how many share appreciation rights? 78 times 100. That's equal to 7,800. Ano ba? So, dito, wala tayong predetermined price. Hanggang dulo, wala kang magkikitang predetermined price. Ang sabi lang sa last, uh, uh, second to the last paragraph, sabi dito, no, the entity estimates that the fair value of share appreciation rights at the end of each year in which a liability exists as shown below. Alright? So, uh, ang estimate daw ng liability natin will be the fair value. Then, at the end of year 3, all share appreciation rights held by the remaining employees uh, vested. So, mag-vest pa lang after 3 years. The intrinsic value of the share appreciation rights at the end of exercise, which is equal to the cash paid out at the end of years 3 to 5, are also shown below. Okay? So, year 1 muna tayo. Wala tayong predetermined price kasi yung liability equal daw sa fair value, ha? So, 14.4 yung ating gagamitin. So, multiply natin to sa fair value, which is 14.4. Once again, if may predetermined price, ibawas mo muna yung predetermined price of fair value. Okay? So, 78 times 14.4, magkano total compensation expense? Total compensation expense will be equal to 112,320. Okay? So, i-divide mo yan sa vesting period which is 3 years para makompute natin syempre yung compensation expense at the end of year 1. So, 112,320 divided by 3, compensation expense at the end of year 1 will be equal to 37,440. So, journal entry is to debit what? Is to debit compensation expense and then to credit salaries payable equal to 37,440. Okay? Now, punta tayo sa year 2. Okay? So, here in year 2, once again, we have a total of 100 employees, no? Year 1, ilan nang umalis? Umalis ang 8. Year 2, ilan kaya ang umalis? Alamin natin. During year 2, 10 employees have left and the entity estimates that a further 6 employees will leave during year 3. So, year 2, 10 yung umalis. Then, year 3, naasahan na 6 pa ang aalis. Okay? So, ilan na lang ang remaining employees natin? 100 minus 8 minus 10 minus 6 or this is equal to 76 employees. Times 100 kasi each employees will receive uh, share appreciation rights or 100 share appreciation rights. So, if we have a total of 7,600 share appreciation rights here. Multiply mo yun sa fair value at the end of year 2. At the end of year 2, ilan na yung fair value? 15.5 na daw. So, multiply mo yan sa 15.5. Okay? So, the total compensation expense now will be how much? 76 times 15.5 is actually equal to 117,800. Wala ba? Next, i-multiply mo yan sa 2 years kasi 2 years na ilumilipas and then divide mo by 3 kasi 3 years ang vesting period para makompute yung cumulative compensation expense. So, times 2 over 3, cumulative compensation expense will be equal to 78,533. Then last but not the least, i-deduct mo dyan yung compensation expense nung year 1 na narecognize mo na last year para makompute natin yung additional compensation expense na i-recognize at the end of year 2. So, minus 37, 440 tayo dito. Okay? So, 78,533 minus 37, 440 is actually equal no, to 41,093. Wala nagba. So, what will be the journal entry here? The journal entry is to debit compensation expense, credit, salaries payable equal to 41,093. Three. We're good. Now, punta tayo sa year 3. Okay? So, ano nangyari sa year 3? 
Year 3 dito, kung mapapansin natin may additional paragraph dito, no? Nung sabi, at the end of year 3, 30 employees exercise their share appreciation rights. Tapos ano pa? Another 28 employees exercise their share appreciation rights at the end of year 4. And then the remaining employees exercise their share appreciation rights at the end of year 5. Ang ibig sabihin ngayon, dito sa year 3, if meron tayong a total of 100 employees, once again, no, year 1, uh, walo yung umalis. Year 2, ilan na nga ulit? Sampu po yung umalis. Year 3, ilan na umalis? Anim. And then, sa year 3 din, ilan yung nag-exercise? Exercise, year 3, ilan na nga ulit? Balikan lang natin. We have 30 employees who exercise their share options. Okay? So, ang ibig sabihin dito, ilan na lang talaga ang remaining. So, meron na lang remaining na 100 minus 8 minus 10 minus 6 and minus 30 or this is equal to 46 employees. Okay? Siyempre, multiply natin yan sa 100 because each employee nga will receive 100 share appreciation rights. So, 46 times 100, that's actually equal no, to 4,600 share appreciation rights. Next, i-multiply natin ngayon yan, right, sa 3 over 3, or wag na kasi dulo na pala yan ng uh, vesting period. So, ang ibig sabihin, i-multiply na lang natin yan sa fair value because once again, no, wala tayong predetermined price dito. So, kapag minultiply mo yan sa fair value, ang makukumpute mo dito is already the total compensation expense. So, magkano na fair value? That's 18.2. So, times 18.2, magkano yung total like compensation expense? That's 46 times 18.2. Or that's equal to 83,720. Okay? Ngayon, ibabawas natin dyan syempre yung compensation expense last year 1 and compensation expense last year 2 para makompute natin yung compensation expense na i-recognize natin ng year 3. Okay? So, minus magkano year 1? 37,440. Year 2 magkano yun? That's 41,093. Or, magkano yan guys? 83,720 minus 37,440 and then minus 41,093 or this is equal to 5,187. Okay? But we're not yet done. Hindi lang yan ang compensation expense natin guys. Sir, bakit po? Because meron nga mga nag-exercise, di ba? So, ilang employees ang nag-exercise? Employees who exercise their share appreciation rights is equal to 30. So, multiply natin yan sa 100 para malaman natin ilang share appreciation rates ba ang na-exercise. So, 30 times 100, this is actually equal to 3,000 share appreciation rates. Multiply natin yan sa payment, which is ang sabi ng problem ano? Sabi ng problem, no? Yung intrinsic value, sabi dito, the intrinsic values of the share appreciation rates at the date of exercise, which is equal to the cash paid out at the end of years 3, 4, 5 are also shown below. So, 15 ang binayad natin. So, multiply natin yan by 15, no? So, magkano ngayon yung total payment? Again, lalagay natin dito, no? Total payment to the 30 employees. That's 3,000 times 15 or that's equal to 45,000 pesos. Okay? So, syempre, i-expense din yan. So, ang journal entry ngayon natin is to debit compensation expense equal to how much? This will be equal to 5,187 plus 45,000 or the debit to compensation expense will be equal to 50,187. Okay? Next, we'll credit what? We'll credit cash equal to the payment of 45,000 pesos. Then, we'll credit salaries payable for the additional no, compensation expense of 518. Seven. So, this will be the journal entry in year 3. Okay? Ngayon, punta tayo, no? Nang year number 4. So, sa year 4, ilan na nga ulit yung remaining? Doon na tayo sa remaining, no? Meron tayong 46 employees na natitira based sa computation natin at the end of year 3. Kaso, ilan na nag exercise ng year 4? Year 4, 28 ang nag exercise So, lalagay natin dito, exercise, year 4, Ilan na nga ulit yun? That's 28 employees. So, ang ibig sabihin ngayon, remaining at the end of year 4 will now be equal to how, ilan na lang? How many? 46 minus 28 or this is equal to 18 employees. Okay? 
Ngayon, i-multiply natin yan sa 100 kasi bawat isa makaka-receive nga ng tig isang daan. So, ang ibig sabihin, we have a total of 1,800 share appreciation rates here. Times the fair value, no, para makumpute natin yung total compensation expense, which is 21.4. So, 21.4. So, magkano yung revised total compensation expense? Sir, bakit ka nag-recompute? Because once again, no, until the liability is settled, the entity shall remeasure the fair value of the liability at each reporting date. So, hanggat hindi yan nasasettle, magre-remeasure tayo dito sa cash settled share base payment. So, 1.8 times 21.4, see to it that this is equal to 38,520. Alam nagba yun? Ngayon, ganito. Magkano, right, yung balance ng ating what? Magkano yung balance ng salaries payable natin so far? Para malaman natin kung nag-increase or nag-decrease ba, no? So, dito, meron tayong 37,440 plus 41,093 and then plus uh, 5,187 no? or that's equal to 83,720. So, see to it na hindi po yung 5187 yung naging basis natin because once again, dito po, nag-exercise na kasi yung iba eh. You with me? So, magkano ngayon? Again, magkano ang decrease? Nagkaroon ng decrease, no? Decrease in salaries payable. The decle decrease in salaries payable here will be equal to 38,520 minus 87, 83,720 or this is equal to, ulitin ko, 38,520 minus 83,720 or this is equal to 45,200. Okay? So, see to it, no? Dot Uh, at the date of settlement, any changes in fair value will be recognized in profit or loss. So, sa profit or loss din natin yan, i-recognize. Okay? Ngayon, may nag-exercise. Ilan yung empleyado nag-exercise ng rights nila? 28 employees po yun. No? So, i-multiply natin yan sa intrinsic value because once again, yun yung payment. No? So, magkano intrinsic value? That's 20 pesos. So, times 20 para malaman natin magkano ba yung total payment sa kanila. Okay? By the way, multiply muna pala natin sa 100 kasi each employees will have a total of 100 share appreciation rates. Okay? So, ilang share appreciation rates muna to? This is a total of 2,800 share appreciation rates. Then, i-multiply natin sa intrinsic value which is equal to 20 para malaman natin magkano ba yung total payment. So, the total payment now no, will be equal to 56,000 pesos. Okay? So, what's the journal entry? The journal entry is to debit compensation expense, no? Equal to how much? This is equal to negative 45,200 kasi sa profit or loss yun yung charge plus yung payment na 56,000 or this will be equal to 10,800. Okay? Next, we'll debit salaries payable kasi dapat mabawasan yan, eh, ng 45,200. So, debit salaries payable equal to 45,200. Then last but not the least is to credit cash for the payment of 56,000 pesos. So that's the journal entry at the end of year 4. Okay? Then last, year 5 na tayo. So year 5, ano nangyari? Uh, sabi dito, And the remaining employees exercise their share appreciation rights at the end of year 5. So ilan na lang ba yung natitira? Isn't it 18 na lang yan? So remaining employees is equal to 18. Multiply natin yan sa 100 because bawat isa makakareceive ng isang daan na share appreciation rates. So, ilang SARS lahat to? This is a total of 1,800 share appreciation rates. Tama ba? Next, syempre, imumultiply natin yan sa intrinsic value para malaman natin magkano yung total payment natin sa kanila. Magkano ba yung intrinsic value at the end of year 5? That's 25 pesos, no? So, times 25, magkano lumalabas yan? 1,8 times 25 is actually equal to 45 pesos. Maliwanag ba? So, so far, magkano ang ating salaries payable na i-de-recognize na natin syempre? So, debit salaries payable equal to how much? Well, that's equal to 37,440. Ito yun, no? Plus 41,093 plus uh, 5,187 and then minus mo, right? Yung 45,2 kasi nabawasan ng 45,2, no? So, minus 45,2 
or ang lumalabas dyan is equal to 38,520. That's actually the total compensation expense at the end of year 4. Okay? Next, will credit cash equal to how much? Will credit cash equal to 45,000 pesos. Then once again, any difference will be debited to salaries expense will be accounted for in profit or loss. Okay? So, 45,000 minus 38,520, the additional compensation expense at the end of year 5 will be equal to 6,480 pesos. Okay? So, that's illustrative problem number 2. So, hopefully, nagets mo yun, no? Now, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 3. But before that, explain muna natin, no? What if meron tayong cash and share alternative? So, sir, anong ibig sabihin yan? Well, merong choice. Tayo or yung mga empleyado natin between the equity settled and cash settled share based payment. Okay? So, dito, alamin mo muna kung sino ang may right pumili. Sino ba yung may right pumili kung equity settled ba yan or cash settled share based payment. So, if yung right no, is na kay corporation or nasa atin, si to it na wala po tayong problema dito. Sir, bakit naman? Because kung nasa atin yung rights, kailangan sabihin ng problem kung cash settled ba yan or equity settled. Because sasabihin dapat ng problem kung ano yung motive ng company, ano talaga yung intention ng company, kung papaano ba niya yan, isi-settle. Okay? So, no problem tayo dyan. Pero what if yung right na punta, no? Again, what if yung right, eh, tipo bang binigay sa ating mga employees? So, if the rights is given to our employees, see to it na hindi na yan simpleng problem. But see to it here, as if i-assume natin na nag-issue tayo ng compound financial instrument. Again, here, according to IFRS 2, we issued a compound financial instrument. Kapag sinabi natin compound financial instrument, once again, no, meron po yung liability portion and equity portion. And as discussed in your, uh, what do you call this, in your liability or our in our discussion actually in liabilities or compound financial instrument, si to it na yung value ng compound financial instrument kailangan ihiwalay or i-separate yan into the liability and equity portion. Okay? And always remember na una po natin or first tayong mag-allocate sa liability based on fair value of the liability and then any residual amount will be the amount allocated to the equity instrument. Okay? So, para mas magets natin yan, punta ngayon tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 3. Okay? So, here on January 1, 2017, an entity granted an em to an employee the right to choose either a share alternative equal to 12,000 shares or a cash alternative which is equal to the cash payment equal to the market value of 10,000 phantom shares. Okay? The grant is conditional upon the completion of 3 years of service. So, 3 years ang ating vesting period. So, if the employee chooses the share alternative, the shares must be held for 3 years after the vesting date. The par value of the share is 25 pesos and at grant date on January 1, 2017, the share price is 51 pesos. Okay? Next, the share prices for the 3-year vesting period are 54, 60, and 65 on December 31, 2017, 18, and 19 respectively. Next, after taking into account the effects of post-vesting restrictions, the entity has estimated that the fair value of the share alternative is equal to 48 pesos per share. So, compute muna natin magkano ba yung value no, nung compound financial instrument natin. Well, value of the compound financial instrument is actually equal to the 12,000 shares, which is the share alternative, times right the 48 pesos per share. Because sabi sa last problem, after taking into account the effects of post-vesting restriction, the entity estimated no, that the fair value of the share alternative is 48. So, magkano yung value ng compound financial instrument? That's 12,000 times 48, or that's equal to 576,000. Okay? Now, magkano yung sa financial liability natin, or doon sa cash settled? Well, that is equal to the 10,000 phantom shares, times the fair value on grant date, which is equal to 51. So, times 51, or this is equal to 510,000. Okay? Then, magkano yung 
sa equity naman, magkano yung sa equity? Residual lang yan. That's 576 minus 510 or this is equal to 66,000 pesos. Are we good? So, dito, the requirement is to provide journal entries. So, start tayo, no? Sa 2017, that's at the end of year 1. Okay? So, at the end of 2017, 54 na yung fair value ng shares. So, if meron tayong phantom shares, again, if our phantom shares or the share appreciation rights is equal to 10,000 shares and then the fair value is now equal to 54, see to it that the total compensation expense here will be equal to 540,000 pesos. Okay? Next, i-add natin dito yung sa equity. Magkano nga ulit yung allocated sa equity? That's equal to 66,000 para makompute talaga natin magkano yung total compensation expense. Ito yung total compensation expense para sa cash settled lang. So, i-add natin yung sa equity para makompute natin yung total compensation expense sa dalawa. So, 540 plus 66,000. This is equal to 606,000. Then, divide natin yan by 3 years because once again, 3 years ang vesting period natin. So, the compensation expense now for the year 2017 is equal to 606 divided by 3 or this is equal to 202,000 pesos. Are we good on that? Next, punta tayo sa 2018. So, dito sa 2018, once again, we have share appreciation rates or phantom shares equal to 10,000 shares. Okay? Multiply natin yun sa fair value at the end of 2018 which is now equal to 60. Para makompute natin yung total compensation expense for the cash settled pa lang yan. Okay? So, this is equal to 600,000. I-add mo dyan yung sa equity or total compensation expense for the equity para malaman natin magkano talaga yung total compensation expense. Well, this is actually equal to 666,000 pesos. Mumultiply natin yan sa 2 because 2 years na yung lumilipas and then over 3 kasi 3 years ang vesting period para makompute yung cumulative compensation expense. So, 666 times 2 over 3, the cumulative compensation expense will be equal to 444,000 pesos. Okay? Then, deduct mo dito yung compensation expense ng 2017, no? which is equal to 202,000 para makompute natin magkano yung compensation expense for the year 2018. So, 444 minus 202, compensation expense at the end of 2018 will be equal to 242,000 pesos. Okay? Ngayon, journalize muna natin. No? So, for the year 2018, 17, the journal entry is to debit compensation expense equal to 202,000. Credit what? Credit share options outstanding equal to 66,000 divided by 3 or this is equal to 22,000. No? Then credit salaries payable for the balance which is equal to 180,000 or kung gusto mo naman, itong 180 na yan, yan yung 540,000 na TCE for the cash settled divided by 3 years. Okay? Next, sa 2018, anong journal entry? The journal entry is to debit compensation expense equal to 242,000 pesos. Credit share options outstanding which is 22,000 pa din. And then, credit salaries payable no, for the balance which is equal to 242 minus 22,000 or this is equal to 220,000 pesos. Sir, paano yung alternative computation ng 220? Well, yung 22, alam mo na, 66 divided by 3. Pero yung 220, that's actually equal to 600,000 times 2 over 3, no? Or, this is equal to uh, 400,000 and then i-deduct mo yung 180,000 na na-recognize mo na last year. Ang makocompute mo dito will be equal to 220,000. Okay? Then last, punta tayo sa 2019. So, share appreciation rates, meron tayong 10,000 shares. Okay? Yun yung phantom shares. Fair value at the end of 2019 is equal to 65. So, multiply natin yun sa fair value which is equal to 65 para makompute yung total compensation expense for the cash settled alone. So, this is equal to 650,000 pesos. Once again, i-add mo lang dito yung sa equity, no? Which is equal to 66,000 para makompute talaga magkano yung total compensation expense. Well, 650 plus 66,000 is actually equal to 716,000 pesos. Huwag mo nang i-multiply ng 3 over 3. Dulo na to ng ating vesting period. No? 
So, ang kailangan na lang natin gawin dito is i-deduct yung compensation expense last 2017 and 2018 para malaman natin magkano yung compensation expense ng 2019. Okay? So, 2017, compensation expense is equal to 202,000 while compensation expense ng 2018 is equal to 242,000 pesos. Okay? So, 716 minus 202 then minus 242 This is equal to 272,000 pesos. So, anong journal entry dito? Journal entry is to debit compensation expense equal to 272,000 pesos. Credit share options outstanding, 22,000 pa rin po ito. Then credit, no? Salaries payable, which is equal to the balancing figure of 250,000. Once again, alternative computation will be equal to the 650,000 Ibawas mo yung 2017 na salaries payable na 180 at saka yung salaries payable ng 2018 na 220. So, minus 180 and then minus 220, ang makocompute mo dito is 250,000. Ano nagba? Ngayon, ganito, what if cash ang napili ng ating mga empleyado? So, kapag cash ang napili ng ating mga empleyado, babayaran natin sila ng 650,000. Okay? Okay. So, the journal entry here is to debit salaries payable equal to 650,000. Siyempre, kapag hindi nila pinili yung share options, i-de-recognize mo pa rin yan. So, debit share options outstanding, which is equal to 66,000. Okay? Credit cash equal to 650,000 lang. And then, credit what? Credit share premium. Because as we all know, share options outstanding, kapag nag-expire, nalilipat sa share premium equal to 66,000. Anag ba? Pero what if yung equity, right, ang napili nila? Again, paano kapag yung equity yung napili? What's the journal entry? Same thing, no? Debit salaries payable equal to 650,000. Debit share options outstanding equal to 66,000 pesos. Credit share capital. Sir, walang debit to cash. Wala namang sabi na sa problem na may babayaran. Sabi dito, shares na yung 12,000, no? So, ibig sabihin dito, wala nang, buy, wala nang proceeds, wala nang cash ang didebit. Okay? So, ilan na nga ulit? Ito, 12,000 shares yan. No? So, 12,000 shares, multiply sa par value, which is magkano ang par value ng mga shares. Par value of the shares is equal to 25. So, times 25 pesos, magkano yan? 12,000 times 25 is actually equal to 300,000 pesos. Then, of course, the balancing figure here is the share premium. So, 650 plus 66,000 minus 300,000, the credit to share premium will be equal to 416,000 pesos. Okay? So, that's the discussion about cash and share alternative. Luanag ba? Then, last problem na tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 4. This is a special problem because from, once again, from equity settled, bigla nagkaroon ng choice between equity and cash. Okay? So, here on January 1, 2017, Rainy Company granted an equity settled award to certain employees for services to be rendered over 4 years from the date of grant. The fair value of the award on grant date is equal to 450,000. On January 1, 2019, which is after 2 years, no, again, this is after 2 years, the award was modified to include cash alternative. The fair value of the cash settled is $150,000, but it was settled at $180,000 on December 31, 2020. So, requirement number one, what amount of liability should RAIN recognize on January 1, 2019 as a result of the modification? Okay? So, dito, magkano ba yung fair value ng liability? At the end of, ah, at the beginning rather of 2019, isn't it? That's 150,000. So if the value, no, of the compound financial instrument at the ah beginning of 2019 is equal to 450,000, and then the fair value of liability is equal to 150,000. See to it here, na yung equity natin, yung residual lang palagi na pupunta sa kanya, which is equal to 300. Thousand pesos, okay? So di to two years na ilumi pasong ibig sabihin ng salaries payable dapat natin is equal to one fifty thousand times two years ang lumilipas over four kasi four years ang vesting period natin. Or here in requirement number one, our final answer no will be equal to seventy five thousand pesos. We good? 
Now, punta tayo sa number 2. Number 2, what amount of salaries expense should the company recognize on December 31, 2020? So, on December 31, 2020, 180 na daw. Pero, hanggang 2019, 150 pa yan. Tama ba? So, ang ibig sabihin, 2019 muna. Uh, for the cash settled, see to it na meron tayo ditong salaries payable which is equal to magkano? Well, this is equal to 150,000 times 3 years na yung lumilipas over 4 years or this is equal to magkano yan? 150 times 3 over 4 or this is equal to 112,500. Ibanag ba? Ang ibig sabihin ngayon dito, if, once again, if, yung total compen uh, compensation expense for the cash settled at on the settlement date which is on the year 2020 is equal to 180,000 then at the end of 2019 yung cumulative compensation expense or salaries payable na nare-recognize na natin is 112,500 see to it that the additional compensation expense now for the year 2020 pertaining to the cash settled pa lang to is equal to magkano? this is equal to 67,500. Ngayon, compute natin magkano ba yung compensation expense for the equity settled. So, magkano nga ulit yung total compensation expense allocated to the equity portion? That's 300,000. Tama ba? Well, i-divide mo lang yan by 4 kasi hindi naman nagbabago yung 300,000 na yan from 20 uh, 19 at the end of up, up until the end of 2020 300,000 yan. So, the compensation expense for the year 2020 pertaining to the equity settled is equal to magkano? Well, this is equal to 75,000 pesos. So, kapag in mo yung dalawang yan, the compensation expense that will be recognized for the year 2020 now will be equal to magkano? That's 67,500 plus 75,000 or this is equal to 142,500. So, requirement number 2, 142,500 will be our final answer. Okay? So, this is the end of our discussion about share-based payment. Hopefully, after the two-part video, marami ka natutunan. No? See you guys on our next video. Keep safe and God bless. Bye-bye!